이 프로그램은 자연의 건강을 전하는 우메켄 제공입니다. And this is kind of controversial issue that happened in the creative industry recently. The part of the reason is this work was made by AI, and it has actually won a major art competition in Colorado. And it happened this year. Many artists community were, I would even describe it as a, they are uh, shocked by the fact that how the artistic judges of the competition consider this to be a winning art. And If we want to think about how much of these technologies and machines has advanced at this point, the question really kind of starts to open up to this idea of what do we mean by creative? And can the machines itself also be considered as creative? If we were to then think about the artwork that the machines then make, some of the artifacts by the machines could be considered as creative. How about some problem solving? What are different ways that the machine can solve things that we could not, humans consider it was so hard to do in the past? Another recent example of advancement in, in computer science and AI research has been around the uh, competition of a game of Go. And so in Korean, 한국말로 이제 바둑이죠. 이제 바둑 경기를 이제 보는 건데. It's a game of Go between the AlphaGo. This is a AI system that was made by Google's DeepMind uh, research team, and Lee Sedong. Lee Sedong was like world champion when it comes to Game of Go. This game was considered as a major event in both computer science and the world of Go, because Game of Go has been considered as too complex game to be kind of made and played by machines, especially not at the level to play with the world champion. But what happened in this game, of course, is that AlphaGo system was able to compete and beat Lee Sedong uh, out of the five games the AlphaGo had won by four against Lee Sedong itself. And what was happening in, during this game, major aspects of it was happening in the game two. It's called a move 37. The AI system was able to make a move that many commentators and experts at the time thought that one seems like it's been done by a Go master. Um, it was making a strategic move that was from many viewers and players thought that it doesn't make sense, but it was counting towards a victory. So if any human players or game master was playing that game and made a move, then people would have applauded as a wonderful play, wonderful game uh, of Go. But in this situation, that move was done by an AI system. To an extent, one way we can think about these ideas and advancement is what we can kind of call it as a creative Turing test. So the one way we can assess how much of these types of technologies evolve is looking at the artifacts, the result from the computers and human. And then the third person, who doesn't know whether it's coming from a machine or human, if that third person cannot distinguish whether it's from a machine or human in terms of quality of that work, that would be technically passing a test of intelligence or passing a test of creativity. So with these two public events, one way we can think about is that To an extent, it has kind of passed the creative Turing test. So these types of events that's happening right now in the creative industry, and so it kind of poses an existential question to the creative industry itself. One is, are these robots going to take away the jobs in the creative industry? Think about design jobs, art, artists, um, or problem solving that is required. What do we really mean by creativity? 
it's kind of challenging the notion. We thought that only the humans were considered as creative, and the machine can only do the manual work. That dynamic's changing. So when we think about why this creativity has evolved um, and what do we mean by those, one way to think about this is taking a step back and look at the evolutions of creativity. What do we mean by creative in the historical perspective? So from the Western historical perspective, the creativity has used to belong only to the divine, the deity, those the ones that have created the world and, and manifest different things. But of course, that notion has kind of much more cascaded into celebrations of individuals who are either creating an artworks to celebrate the deity's creative capacity and that has passed down to, from the Enlightenment era, that now the individuals have rationality and reasons, they're able to create something, that it also passed on to the artistic movements or romantic era, the ones who are considered as a genius, they are the one who's able to compose beautiful music and write great poems, they're touched by God and div divinity. So creativity as a concept has kind of passed on and passed on. And even beyond this artistic work that has a kind of associated with the notions of creativity, now, with solving a scientific problems and, and coming up with new types of understanding of a field, so that intangible aspects of it also considered as a creative as well. And in today's in modern psychologies and research is going on, start to look at creativity itself is not necessarily resigning to one individual or one special individual, it resigns in all of us. That creativity is a trait that exists in every human being. It's a question of how those aspects can be fostered and developed. Um, and then how we create the new types of artworks and, uh, and things, no longer just rely on one person's an idea. We look at the internet, we look at social media, we look at uh, what we can find um, in groups, and those collaborative processes are more celebrated as what's considered as creative in terms of processes. So, if you think about this history of creativity from the Western perspective, from the DT to individuals, and to an extent, what well, we can see this kind of machines and now could be considered as a natural progression of what we consider as creativity. But it's still quite an unnerving notion, right? We think that there must be something that is still unique to the humanity. There's something that we can do that a machine cannot do. And that's kind of the aspects of what I'm going to sharing more from the experience that I was able to have uh, while I was teaching at Parsons. And these are some of the characteristics that I kind of took away and I felt um, when I was engaging with the creative, both at the Parsons School of Design, but also with other creative communities uh, in the entertainment industries to uh, other creatives in Seoul and in Mumbai. And these are some of the uh, characteristics that I realize about what are the emerging creators and what kind of processes and the way that they think about is different from what the machines can do. So the three types of characteristics that I think is important are process, value, and transform. Start with the first one. So what do I mean by process? So to an extent, how a creative professional, a creative individual think about things are really different from um, machines in the sense that when creative person engaging with an object, they're not just interested in why this object itself is interesting, but they're interested in the questions of why and how. What are the things that are kind of led to the development of those? And that's kind of the key aspects of uh, kind of thinking that I always notice uh, with engaging with emerging creatives, that they're always interested in the systems and what kind of stakeholders are engaged to for us to see at the moment that we're seeing that specific objects or services that we have. One of the favorite assignments that I gave to my students at Parsons is called Innovation Legacy Map. Uh, the idea is that you identify a specific things that's considered as innovative. So let's say a self-driving car. From that point on, what I encourage them to kind of research is think about what are the different industries and domain and the historically what has it led to that uh, specific thing to happen. So maybe around the self-driving cars, you looked at some kind of technological advancement uh, from how the uh, in first car was invented to automations and processes that led to mechanizations that has been now able to infuse with softwares that has led to this software, uh, self-driving car. There's also the history of transportations and cultural movements around what do we mean by move around. 
and also in the third level, much more the social level um, and in how we think about uh, the rules of automations and machines in our society, how that has shifted from the past to today. The reason examining these three things, uh, at least three things, are important, to, important because when we think about what we consider as some special innovation thing, things are happening, but if you start um, pe uh, peeling behind this, the skins of that specific things, you're able to find that intersecting ideas and historical precedents that led to the development of it. And it may not be as confounding as then, than we thought about. And that leads to the second idea of a notions of a value. Engaging with emerging creatives, um, they now know, okay, so whys and hows around what they see. All right, if they understand how things are made, now they're more also interested in what kind of values and things they want to instill in these concepts. How can we make it different than the one that exists before? What kind of messages when a certain companies and products and services give to the, audience, uh, to the stakeholders within the society? So one of the uh, classes that I teach is on design of business. So this is a class that's looking into different modes of business models and business practices. And for a long time, a major kind of concept of thinking about what good a business can do has been think about in this context of corporate social responsibility. And oftentimes these kind of notions of corporate social responsibility, how a business can be a force of good in the world, um, has been criticized a lot as a just a marketing ploy. In what way they're actually meaningfully making a change and make an impact, those things have been challenged by a lot of researchers and looking at how the company's practice has gone. When I engage with students today, I specifically remember one time when they're talking about the issues of sustainability within a business, first thing our students said was, of course the business should be ethical. And that's the beginning point of why that business should exist, which is very different from how we think about in a business today as a maximization of stakeholders' values. The creating a short-term profit has been considered the major aspects of why business exists. But these types of components are focusing on what are the value that a business should have. It changed the dynamic of how we think about this, uh, these companies and organizations. And that leads to the last aspects. So one of the characteristics of emerging creative that I see is the idea of a transformation. And transformative aspects of knowledge is, sounds fancy, but is not that much different uh, than what I've been kind of talking about. They usually don't fit in the one category of knowledge. So it could be sociology or psychology or engineering. Transformative knowledge is sometimes is a little bit off. It doesn't fit into one category as a concept. It usually generates something different and new. And for this, one of the example that I want to, I'd like to talk about is my colleague, John Bruce. He's another faculty member at Parsons School of Design. And one of the projects he's been working on has been called the End of Life Project. So what he's been doing uh, in his research is working um, with his collaborator. Uh, they fought, uh, for over four years, they have interviewed the five individuals who are at that different stage of dying. And they're also being trained as a doula. So these are the people that are able to engage with people at the end of life care, and then walk with them. And then they created extensive archives of documentations. Uh, they're filming and talking with them, engaging with them, being in the hospital with them, going to a life event with them, and documented all those aspects of their work. And what's compelling about uh, Professor Bruce's work is, yes, to an extent, one of the aspects of the work that comes out was a documentary film that had gone into major, major uh, film festivals, but also there's an exhibitions and archives and work that is start to highlight a major aspects of how in a society perceive the end of life. Oftentimes, many practice that we do in the society is look at that sense of dying it happens around in a medical facility in a very clinical sense. But what his body of work is trying to shift the focus is we gotta start thinking about the death as a end of a life where we have to start thinking about the celebration of that life itself in a, in a much more meaningful way. So that is the kind of the aspects of the work that I think about as a transformative does not belong in a one category, one forms of knowledge, but has a cumulative effect that kind of make us think about a new way. So all these three different things we've been looking at, 
process, value, and transform about human creativity. But at the end of the day, we must ask ourselves, hey, people have been saying about the game of Go for a while, that it was too complex to be made, but now the machines can play the game of Go pretty well. Can the machines just copy these characteristics in the future? Can this also happen, no matter what we think about is so unique about humanity, can this also happen as well at the end of the day? The question uh, is kind of a tough one. And I think at this stage and where we're at, I cannot answer that question. But what I do know is we have to start thinking about AI as some, not some kind of external super force that exists in the world, but we have to recognize that AI itself is also an artifact. A thing that's just look around us, everything that was made uh, by humanity with certain purpose and goals and others. If we start to recognize AI as not some kind of something impenetrable, un un incongruable things that exist in the world, but once we start to engage with AI as just another um, artifact that is a result of our labors and our understanding of things, we have to think about in a way that how we can bring the creators in the development of that technology itself. And these are kind of the key aspects of when we think about the idea of a design and what's the role of emerging creatives are. Design the world that we see today, these are the result of the choices that people in the past has made. In the world that we are engaging now, and we're thinking about the future itself, the choices that we make today in how we want to shape this technology, that's going to set up the trajectory of what the technology can do and will do in the future. So with that in mind, wonderful to meet you all. And thank you for um, engaging with me today. 이 프로그램은 자연의 건강을 전하는 우메캔 제공이었습니다.